Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have another visit of using Python within Excel. If you haven't already set up Python within Excel, you can check out this video that I'm linking here and see how to set it up. Currently it's only for beta users, but I'm sure it is going to be something that gets rolled out pretty soon to everyone once they are sure that it is a stable release. So what I thought we would do today is actually try and extend Excel's capabilities with something that we wouldn't normally do in Excel. In that previous video, instead I was just doing some very basic things, calculating means, doing graphs. These are things that we could do in Excel anyway. Today what I thought we would do is we would start with the Iris data set. This is a famous data set uh, collected in the 30s by Ronald Fisher. It had some very distinct patterns and things that are uh, why people are still using it today. So it's got these different types of iris flowers. And what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be doing a k-means cluster analysis. This is something that would normally get taught in a statistics or data science course. Uh, I've done it many times in R when I've been teaching. And today we're going to be doing it in Python. I've never done it in Python before. I'm still fairly new to Python. And so it was a little bit of a learning experience for me, which was really helpful. And basically what we find is that we can run a cluster analysis and just this one here on the left we can see that there's some fairly distinct patterns of clustering. There's other things we can then do with it after that, but it just provides a really nice example. Okay, so this is the Iris data set. You can go onto Wikipedia, have a read about it if you haven't come across it before. Certainly if you have been involved in any kind of stats or data science, either as a learner or a teacher, I'm very sure you will have seen this. So I wanted to get some Python code to be able to do in Excel. And the easiest way I thought is see what ChatGPT had to say about it. I also asked Bard. Uh, Bard gave some okay results. ChatGPT on the other hand gave really nice step by step, illustrated the steps, explained the code, even has these handy little copy code bits here. The one thing that it does do, which I really originally wanted to avoid and now I'm actually going to do two different ways, is they use the iris data set which is actually built into the data sets library. So up here from sklearn we import data sets. The iris being one of these famous kind of fundamental data sets is just built in there. And so with this code it uses it as built in. I'm going to show you how to do your cluster analysis in Excel using Python. Firstly using this code and then I'll show you how to adapt it to actually use the spreadsheet. So like I did in my previous video where I had the iris data already set up in a spreadsheet, I'll show you the changes that I need to make. There's only a couple of little changes in order to be able to do it that way instead. So we've got this code, we carried it over. Uh, let's jump over to Excel and take a look. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Uh, we can see that a, the final thing has been done. These have been reversed from what I showed you before. So we can see that same pattern though when we're doing a k equals 3, k means clustering. And so this code that I'm about to show you, we will pull this down to have a look. Uh, I will put on my website, I'll link that up. I don't think that I will put up the Excel sheet itself, but I will give you this code and I'll show you the difference between using the built-in data and using the spreadsheet worth of data. There's only a couple of little differences. So we've carried this code over. We're bringing in the data. So up here we load up the data set and then the dot data just strips out just uh, what a data scientist might call the feature set, but basically it's just the data bit of it. We specify k equals three for this particular cluster analysis. Again, if we were doing a more in-depth tutorial on cluster analysis, then I would also be showing you how we come up with how many clusters we should use. The actual k-means itself we set up just here, really nice and simple. So in R and in Python, very, very simple thing to do. We just specify the data, we specify the number of clusters. Here it just generates some labels for us. And then the rest of the code is really just generating the plots. So we set some colors. We set up a set of axes here. We then loop through doing scatter plots. And I'm sure there are other ways of doing this. And so if you are more of a Python expert than me, feel free to add a comment describing some alternate ways of doing this. 
And so we just loop through, we're taking X, which was our data, plotting just one cluster at a time with the colors. Certainly in R, we could do this with uh, vectors or arrays. Goal of today is to do something in Excel that you normally wouldn't be able to do in Excel. Coming down, we then identify the centroids. So that's the center of each cluster. They're going to be marked with X's into our scatter plot. We add some labels and then we create the plot. And down here, here it is. Remember, if we are running Python within Excel, we need to hit Control and Enter. Once we've entered all of our Python code, and that Python code would just come from insert Python. So actually on this sheet, we didn't need these columns of data because we're using Python's built-in Iris data set. Uh, one thing which is really important to note is that the order of the columns is different from what I have here. So these I just grabbed off the web. Someone had a handy Excel file. They've gone petal with the length and sepal with the length. That is not the same order as the Python built-in set. So it's important to know because that was one of the differences when I did this a second time using the sheet instead. So this code I'll put on the website. We've got sepal length by sepal width and really nicely set up graph here as you would very likely see in a data science course when they were teaching you about cluster analysis. Okay, so coming across to my second sheet where I'm actually working with the data in the sheet. So this is where we need to take note that these columns were in a different order. When I did this, uh, I also ended up with my blue and my red coloring reversed just by the way that the clusters got labeled as 0, 1, and 2. But other than that, we have produced the same plot using the data. So let's have a look at our code and the differences here using the data from the sheet instead of the built-in data set. This is going to be helpful for getting used to being able to refer to data within our sheet and to be able to apply Python to it. It's uh, not always completely intuitive and having done a little bit of Python, it's always been in notebooks which tend to process the data and uh, process the code in chunks. Whereas here you need to think a little bit more about what's actually going to get output because the code is sitting within a cell instead. It gets a little bit more confusing. Okay, so let's have a bit of a drag down. So the first thing where we notice its difference is that we are pulling in the data off the sheet. So we are just using Excel. Uh, we've got the cell reference. We've got header equals false. Index equals false, I don't think we need. Header equals false means we're not grabbing these labels. We could strip them off after the fact instead. So. Plen plenty of ways we could do that. We could have imported the whole iris, so A through F, and then stripped off the bits that we didn't want if we had preferred. With this, with the k-means, it's just expecting a data frame or an array with the numbers only. And that's a little bit different from when you've done it in R. You can normally just pass in the matrix from a, or the data frame without having to mess around with that quite as much. So it's just little, little things like that that are important to take note. The k-means is the same. The only other thing that I had to change was down in the scatter plot, because the columns were in a different order, I needed to change which columns were getting referred to so that I was still plotting the sepal width and the sepal length. And I had to add, just for the indexing, in the previous one it's indexing an array, here where it's a data frame instead, the indexing is a little bit different. If you're familiar with Python, you know, you'll just naturally do this. Uh, for me, as someone that's used R for so long, I'm very used to just putting my square brackets using that for my referencing, and I had to, to get this to work, instead I had to add just the uh, .loc for referring to the particular indexing from a data frame rather than from an array. So that was a little bit different for me. And again, there might be other ways that you can, can do this, uh, but this solved, solved the issue for me. Rest of the plotting code, exactly the same. And once we've run that, then here with our data sitting in Excel, we've been able to use some Python code and do a piece of analysis, a k-means clustering analysis you normally would not be able to do in Excel without either some sort of messing around with VBA or someone's extension that they've written. 
Uh, just using that native k-means within Python, so much easier. And if we were doing analysis that had to be within Excel, we couldn't use Python natively, we couldn't use R, then we now have access to these really great things. So one last thing to note for those of you who, like me, have used R for a long time and are just coming over to Python, really important to remember that any indexing that happens starts from zero rather than one. So the first position within a, an array or a vector is going to be position zero rather than position one. This is common in a number of other languages as well. So if you've programmed in other languages, not that unusual. If you've only ever worked in R, um, but I think MATLAB as well, then that's just something also important to note. I'll be back soon with more videos on R, Excel, stats, and all sorts of other random stuff. Uh, if you've got any particular types of analyses that you'd be keen to see in Excel using Python, let me know. I'll certainly be doing more videos where I am exploring other kinds of analysis that previously would have been difficult to do in Excel.